Okay, here's where we left off in the last video. We just created a channel section component that contains both the channel list and the channel form components. Our channel form component isn't fully implemented yet. We'll work on finishing it right now. Okay, here's how the channel form should work. You should be able to key the value into the input field, then when you press enter, the new channel should be added to our list of channels and the input field should be cleared. Let's start with the form submission, which happens when the enter key is pressed. We can add an on submit event handler to our form, which will allow us to respond to the enter key being pressed. The way we do this is by setting the on submit of the form equal to some event handler or function. We'll set it to this.onSubmit, a function that doesn't exist yet. We'll create the function in a moment. Now remember, if we like to have access to our React component within the event handler, which is pretty much always the case, then we need to call bind and pass in this. Okay, now let's create our onSubmit function, which takes a single event parameter. The next question you probably have is, how do I access what was typed in the input field? There are a couple possible ways, but we'll just look at one of them right now. What we're going to do is store the value keyed in the input field in the state object. So for the moment, let's leave the onSubmit handler as is. We'll come back to this later. Next, let's add an onChange event handler to the input field, again using the bind function. Now let's add the onChange function, which takes an event parameter. At this point, we can access the value of the input via e.target.value. Let's go ahead and log the value to the console, save our file, and try it out. I'll refresh the page, then I'll open up the developer tools and start typing into the input field. And as you can see, it's getting logged to the console. So as I mentioned earlier, we'd like to save the keyed value into the channel form state. Doing so will allow us to access the keyed value via state in our onSubmit function. New React developers may be tempted to set the state using dot notation, but this isn't the correct way of setting state and won't work. Instead, you'll set the state by calling this.setState, passing in an object with the values you'd like saved or modified in the component's state. Okay, so now that we're storing the keyed channel in state, we can access the current value in our onSubmit function. State can be read by using dot notation, this.state.something. Let's go ahead and set the variable channel name to the corresponding name stored in state. Now we could use the full dot notation syntax this.state.channel name, but let's try using the new ES2015 destructuring operator. It's a bit more terse and I kind of like it. Just to see if it's working, let's log the variable channel name to the console. We'll need to call the prevent default method on the event object to keep the browser from trying to submit the form via HTTP. Let's also remove the logging in our onChange event. Now let's save the file. Next, let's refresh the page in the browser and key a new channel into the input field. Cool, it's working. Okay, so here's the next question. What do we do with channel name in our onSubmit function? We could append the new value onto our array. However, it's not gonna work like we want it to. Let's try it anyway, just to see. We'll key channels.push and pass in a new object where the name is the value stored in channel name. Now let's save the file. We'll flip over to the browser and refresh the page. Now I'll key a new channel and press enter. We see the value logged in the console, but we've got two problems. The channel list doesn't update to reflect our new channel and the input isn't cleared. Let's deal with the easy problem first, the channel not getting cleared. We can fix this by simply setting the channel name in the state to an empty string and changing the input's value to this.state.channel name. One more thing we'll need to initialize the state object in our channel form. If we don't do this, we'll get an error when we first open the page, because we're trying to access the channel name from the state object, however the state doesn't exist yet. We can initialize the state object by using the class constructor, which takes the props parameter. Then we'll call super, passing in the props. Next, we'll set the state equal to an empty object. Let's save the file, then pull the browser back up, refresh the page. Now I'll key a new channel in again and press enter. And now our input is getting cleared out. Now let's look at why we aren't seeing the new channel displayed on our page. The reason we aren't seeing the new channel is that React isn't watching our array for changes. We need to modify where we're storing the channel's array. We need to place the array in React state because items modified in React state will trigger a render cycle. So the next question is, where should we store it? In other words, which component state should we store the channel array in? The rule of thumb is to store the state in a component that is a common or shared parent to the children components that need to access and modify the state. 
In our example, we've got two components that need to access the channel's array. The channel form component, which needs to add new channels to the array, and the channel list component, which displays the channels. Both of these components share the same parent component, channel section. So it would seem that channel section would be a good place to store the channel's array. And that's what we'll do in the next video.